Hello, I'm David and welcome back to the Afternoon Club and welcome back to my garden and we are getting to late spring now and even seeing the start of the summer flowers and you can see these lovely flowers behind me. They're called alliums and they're one of my favourite plants. Would you believe this is from the same plant that you get your onions from and look how lovely they are and I've got lots of those in the garden. But I don't want to talk about alliums today, I want to talk about transplanting your seedlings. Now you know when you are a baby or when a baby comes home to the house, the first thing it goes into is maybe a little Moses basket then it goes into a cot and then it goes into maybe a child's bed and then an adult bed so as you get older you need more space and plants are just the same they start in little seed trays like this they grow and grow and grow and eventually they need some more space and so it's time to what we call transplant them move them from one place to another to give them a little bit more space I've already done it with some of these salad plants these lettuces that I have here and I've actually been cropping these as well so you can see that they are well underway the leaves are well up and in fact I use these as cut and come again varieties now that just means I've got my scissors here that instead of taking the whole lettuce up when I want it all I need to do is just cut some of the leaves so like that and that and that and put them down into my bowl and that will be my lunch. I'll have to put it somewhere shady out of this bright sunshine. So how do we get to this stage? How do we get to the stage of the plants being ready to harvest? Well, what we've got to do is plant the seeds initially. They come up like this. And then when they get to this stage and they look like they're struggling for room, it's time to move them. You've got to be gentle when you do this because the plants are very small. They are very fragile. I find some of the best things to use are maybe a sharp pencil like this um, or a plant label like that. Um, very good indeed. So what you do then is just put that into the soil. Really you want to put it quite shy of where the plant is going into the ground. Okay, So you'll see that little point where it goes down to make the roots and you want to put it in just slightly to the side of that just to break up the soil. Sometimes the compost can be a little bit hard on top so you need to crack through that layer and provided the soil is loose the plant should come away like that with lots of lovely root on it as well. Now we don't want those roots to be out of the damp soil for very long although the soil is actually quite dry. We want it to get into its new place so we lift the plant. I'm lifting it just by a leaf there, well, just by the very bottom of the stem actually, and touching it very, very lightly. If you squeeze too hard on this plant, squeeze too hard on say that stem down there or too many of the leaves, they will break. And then, well, we won't have a plant and we'll have to go to the next one. Um, so it's important to be very, very gentle with the plants when they're at this stage. So now it's time to find a new home for this little lettuce plant and I've left some space in this container. As I say when you're planting the seeds really important to plant them maybe every two weeks. You don't want to plant loads in one go and then have all the lettuce at the same time. It's called successional planting. You want to plant some seeds in a tray and then have them coming on like this and then plant some more so that there's more coming on after that because although I say these are cut and come again it is good to have fresh ones coming through. So very simple new home still got my pencil here just a case of wiggling that around so you do the pencil wiggle like that and then and this is really something you have to do gently is just drop the end of those roots down into that hole that you've made and there you go you see them going down push that other lettuce leaf out of the way and once it gets to the top just pull the compost in around it like that and make it nice and snug like you like to be nice and snug in your bed and that is that little leaf planted so now it's just a matter of doing a few others. Just one thing to add to that, most plants do like to be transplanted so there's a bit more space between them, but it doesn't apply to all plants. You might remember those carrots we planted a few videos ago. Uh, they're up now, you can see them here. I tried to leave space between each one of them, but inevitably you get a few seeds landing together side by side, and you can see that's happened just here. And so, there's no point in transplanting those, it's just a case of uh, pricking out, pulling out uh, the ones that are close together to leave more space. Otherwise you'll get really small carrots. So that's what to do with carrots.
Now something I really love about plants is that you can make more of them for free and lavender is perfect for it. It's one of my favourite plants and it's really good for bees as well in the garden. The flowers are just starting to come on it yet. It'll be a while yet before those flowers come out but they're that kind of, well, lavender colour, that purpley colour. But even if you just rub your hands through lavender or on a very warm day, you'll notice this lovely smell coming from it and it's just lovely to have in the garden. So how do we make more of it? Well, we're going to take cuttings. Sounds complicated, but it couldn't be easier. This is a plant that we can take some cuttings from here. Actually, a lot of these stems aren't going to flower just yet, which is perfect. And we can do one of two things. We can either take a pair of scissors, or in my case, these secateurs. Obviously, be careful with uh, sharp things and maybe get help from mum or dad. And we can either go right down just to where it's starting to become a bit woody at the bottom and we could snip it off. Or in the case of this one here, actually, I'm just going to tear it away from the main stem and it comes away with this little heel just at the bottom. Once you take your cutting, put it straight into a plastic bag just to keep the moisture in it. If it dries out, it won't work. It won't take when we pot it on. So straight into one of those, especially on a day like today where it's quite warm. So we'll take a few because they might not all produce roots in the end and then we'll go over to the table where I'm going to pot them up. So you bring your cuttings over to the table or wherever you want to do it in the garden and then open up this bag and take them out. Now at the bottom we can see this little woody bit here and the bit where I teared it away from the main plant. Just going to snip that off just to tidy that end up like that. Then what we're going to do is take off some of these bottom leaves because they are going to be underneath the soil. So take those off like that. And then right at the top of a cutting, you've got this really floppy growth at the top here. And we don't want too much leaf growth at the moment. So I am going to actually snip that off there. And that is our cutting. Now, we want to put it into soil which is really well drained. So I've added some sand and some grit to this compost. And it's best to put them in around the outside of the pot. So that's just what I'm going to do. So we have a few more to put in that I've done here. And as I say, they might not all take, but even if two or three of them do, you've had two or three plants for free, which is great, isn't it? And you could plant those out around your garden to please you. You could put them in pots or you could give them away to friends and family once we're able to get out and about again. So the final thing that needs is a good watering and then I'm going to leave it somewhere bright. So outside somewhere, maybe near a wall, but not in direct sunlight. That just means not somewhere where it's getting hard sun all day on a sunny day. You want it to be somewhere that's maybe just a little bit shady. So the next big question is, how do you know if they've worked well? You will know because the ones that don't take will die. They'll go brown and just look dead. The ones that do take will start to grow. And you will see in the bits between the leaves and the stem, new shoots starting to come out. And you'll know then that roots are starting to form. Whenever that happens, don't move them straight away. Don't take them out and pot them up somewhere else straight away. Leave them for a while and then you will know that they're definitely going to, to transplant. And if we just look over here, this is a cutting that I took at the end of last year. And you can see, look at that, the new growth is coming on it. It was only a tiny little cutting to start with. And I haven't tipped it out before. I only put one cutting into this pot. Uh, so let's see if it's made roots. It's a moment of truth. Yeah, look at that. You see that? All these roots down the bottom have been created, so we know that that plant will take. It's time to plant that one out in the garden, a plant for free.